Today is the last in the series of four lessons on contests. And this one is going to be really specific. I'm going to go through, at least for me, types of contests and how I would play the liners, where I would play the liners, how many, what's the lead up, you know, one per hour, two per hour, all that type of stuff. I'm going to try to be as specific as I can. So let's specifically get into this. <laughs> Hey Buckaroos, this is the last lesson on contest number four of this series. And today we're going to get into specifics, some uh, big specifics. Before we do that, um, I, I want to talk about cont uh, contests and in, in promotions just in a, in a sort of a general sense. I mean, one of the things as a PD you really need to do is get a handle on how you are when it comes to thinking up and putting together promotions. Okay, what kind of a person are you? Like, I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of me. I could put together some amazing promotions, but I needed somebody really to start the idea. And what I mean by start the idea, I'll give you an example. Um, I had a guy who was working for me, Blair Bartram. He was my promotion director. He went on to be a PD. Uh, he had a lot of great radio stations and, uh, you know, for years and years and years. And what Blair did, one day he just came in and he was out at a, at a sports bar and he was watching... Uh, the Toronto Blue Jays, okay, and, and they're playing at Sky Dome. And like, you know, every stadium, there's a huge monstrous screen there, okay, that, you know, you're seeing the ball game on. And right at the time, Cheers was coming to an end. So think Cheers, Seinfeld, Friends, you know, huge series, television series coming to an end. And a lot of talk about it. And he just walks in and he, and he come in, he goes, hey, I had an idea. Yeah, what? Why don't we see if we can take over Sky Dome? So, you know, picture, you know, you know, L.A. Stadium where the Dodgers play or something like that, some big stadium, okay? And up on the big jumbo uh, screen, we'll, we'll have the last episode of Cheers and we'll fill the place with 30,000, 40,000 people. Okay, so he, that's what he's throwing at me. And I'm going, wow, uh, I love that idea, but how do we pull that off? Now, point being of telling you that I would have never in a million years put those two things together. You know, he's, you know, he's thinking of a television show, watches a ball game, sees the Jumbotron and goes, why don't we play that, that TV on that TV? I, I would have never thought that in a million years. But once he said it, it was like, ooh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's going to take a whole lot of work and a whole lot of calls and a whole lot of everything. How are we going to do that and pull that off? And then that turned into building it and promoting it and putting all the pieces together to actually do it, of which we did, and I don't know, it was like 30, 40,000 people showed up, and in order to get in, they had to bring a can for a food bank. That's the way the stadium would allow us to use their stadium, and we got a few sponsors to pay for the guards and everything at the stadium, um, yeah, because it was kind of costly to do, but it was an amazing unbelievable promotion that you could pull that off. So if you're one of those people like Blair who is constantly throwing up ideas, you may or may not be that same person who then can take that ball and keep running with it or hand it off to somebody else who will run with it to put together the nuts and bolts pieces of everything to actually get it to run. Or there's a third person involved usually, um, or at least the third type of personality, and sometimes you might catch somebody with all three, although that's pretty rare, that actually the third person is someone who really doesn't have the creativity of coming up with the idea. In other words, they would not have put the ball game and the television show together. That idea would have never popped. They would have a hard time figuring out how to actually pull it off and get it to go. But if you said, hey, I need some people to make calls to lawyers, I need somebody to do the, you know, the grunt work of making sure that there's security there and work all that detail stuff out, the super details, it's great to have one of those type of per, you know, people in your building that can do that. And again, sometimes somebody can do two. Uh, I could probably do two, but I for sure couldn't do the first thing. So figure out what you are, okay? Now, Let's get into specifics. Let's assume that you have all of that done and you have a major promotion on your hands, but you have to push it. Like one of the things that, just to go back for a second, one of the things that entered into this was when we decided to take that on, all of a sudden now, for something that was pretty bizarre at the time, extremely bizarre at the time, 
you're stepping into, ooh, man, can we pull this off? I got to make sure that 40,000 people show up with cans of food to fill that stadium. Because if that stadium looks pretty empty, we're going to look like idiots. And it's going to reflect incredibly badly on us. You know, because you're out in public and you have an entire you know, baseball stadium that you're trying to fill. If nobody shows, oh my God, that'd be awful. So you have that. Toronto, some 33,000 fans turned out to watch the show in that city's Sky Dome. The episode had Kirstie Alley running off to Mario. Let's start there, or for an actual contest. Let me jump back to that contest that, uh, you know, I always thought was great, was the intuition one, which is the flipping of the coin. You know, heads, it's the station call letters, tails, it's the station's frequency, and they have to guess it on the air. So it's a pretty cool contest to play. But point being, these are major major contest. The intuition contest was this is the major rating periods contest and we're doing this thing for two months and we're banging at it and we're going to be giving away, you know, a lot of money, sixty, seventy thousand dollars worth of stuff. So there's the contest and then there's the other one where I got to put 40,000 people into a baseball stadium and fill it. You know, I got to do a sellout baseball game and there's nobody playing. It's just a TV screen. I mean, you know, hello. What do you do in that instance? Well, you have to start with this and, you know, hopefully you got a feel for certainly the baseball stadium, the importance. First, you have to judge the importance to you of what you're actually doing. You got to really kind of feel that. It's like, okay, major contest promotion. We got $50,000 to give away. It's a lot of money. Maybe it's a hundred grand. Maybe you're doing a condo. Maybe you're giving away a house or a bunch of cars or something. This is a major promotion. Okay, so with that in mind, you had better do some major promotion about it. And then there's other things where you might be doing a contest. Somebody gave you some tickets, you know, the act, it's, it's okay, but it's not, you know, you're not giving away something to, you know, the reunion of the Beatles or something. It's just okay. So with that in mind, you probably are not going to, I certainly wouldn't, you wouldn't be saying, okay, I'm going to go full tilt and bang away with promos and liners and IDs and sweepers and splitters and all that sort of stuff. I just kind of... We'll try to weigh it in your mind a feeling of oh, how much should I throw at this given what it is. So you first have to ascertain that. What's the importance to you of what you're about to you know, promote? Generally, the more impact that you want on an audience, the more promos and liners and IDs and splitters that you're going to have to do. So let's start here. As a general rule, it's totally fine to bang one recorded promo couple liners, maybe a top hour ID or a sweep ID every single hour for weeks. It really isn't as large as it seems. I've done that for years and years and years in the appropriate setting when the contest or promotion demanded it. Let's go through some detail stuff. When I say recorded promo, picture something that's between 30 and 45 seconds long. Now, for me, I used to write promos um, or have somebody else say, I, mean, I didn't care what the, what, you know, what the length was. So if it was 30 seconds, it was 30. If it was 42, it was 42. Just wrote them so that I got across what I wanted to get across in as small a period of time as I could possibly do it um, and still be creative about it. So whatever it turns out to be time-wise, that's what it was. So that's what I mean when I say recorded promo. You are selling the contest, you are explaining the contest or promotion, you're going through all the reasons why it'll be great for them to win, how to win, all of that type stuff. Then there's liners. To me, a liner would be stuff that I've written out and I've given to the jock. Um, they can read it verbatim or they hopefully will put it into their own words, but it's going to be like, you know, 10, 12 seconds long, maybe a little bit longer. And ideally, I would make them do it over the top of an intro, okay? And so you're in a sweep, they would jump in, they would do the liner, and then they would intro the song in a perfect world to me, pull that off. Maybe even relate it to the song, which would be even, even more awesome. A sweeper ID, when I mention a sweeper ID, uh, something that, you know, you're in the middle of a sweep and there's a produced ID. And again, much like a liner, it is selling the contest or saying it's coming up. It's just mainly a creative reminder that the contest is going to be played this hour or it's coming up in this show or this is what we're doing and you can win. 
And then there's the top of the hour IDs too, which would be the legal call letters. WXXX Mobile, Alabama, where this hour you could win $1,000 in whatever the name of the contest is. To me, the starting point for everything is, let's assume that it's a major contest, what would you do? So this is what I would do, and this is what I'll counsel you to think about doing with your radio station. I would do one recorded promo, that's that 30 to 45 second thing. I would do two liners with the jocks, and maybe another um, recorded ID, you know, sweeper ID. So now there's four things going every hour. Now that may sound like a whole lot to you, but if you start to do the, the math on that, you got, let's just say it's a 30 second recorded promo. You got two 12 second liners, and then maybe you have another eight second recorded, you know, uh, image ID about the contest that's rolling. When you add that up, you're only got like, I don't know, a minute, six or seven seconds. So let's just round it off to a minute. You have a minute one minute out of 60 minutes in an hour. The odds are like something like, I don't know, 0.016 or something that, you know, somebody's gonna hear those. You know, it's like pretty much 98%, that's the odds that they're gonna, they're not gonna hear any of those. And that's if they're listening intently. If it's playing on in the background, somebody may be, you know, the jock may be talking about a liner, but somebody else is talking to them, they don't hear it, it blew right by. So. You know, you have to bear that in mind that you got to bang away pretty hard, you know, and cut through that you're doing something that somebody should pay attention to. So let's go through some things of specifics and I'll try to dig down even deeper uh, to help you with this. Let's start digging down with specifics and we'll start with the promos. The promos that I was mentioning are 30 to 45 seconds in length. What do you do with those? How do you build them? What, you know, what's that? So what I would do is for the pre-promos, I would make five separate distinct promos. I would run them, you know, it's coming Monday, coming Monday, coming Monday, and five different ones, at least, minimum, maybe there'll be more. I really got in a creative bent and I might knock off 10 of them or something like that. Uh, but I would definitely stop, that's the minimum, five. I would do five that run for a week and uh, they probably are running every, every hour. But let's just uh, skip that for a second. Promos, I would make five, minimum of five. And then the first week, these are the five running promos. Week number two, here's another brand new, fresh, five running promos. Next week after that, five new ones, and five new ones, and five new ones, and five new ones for every week that the contest or promotion keeps going. You want stuff to sound fresh. Similar thing for liners. For the liners, I would do eight, mainly because uh, I, I typically put a piece of paper in, you know, and a piece of paper if you're gonna be writing basic, let's just say, 10 second liners, you're gonna be able to fit eight on, you know, on one page. So if you, you know, if you have a page like this, you know, this, you're gonna be able to fit eight of them on there. You stick it, you know, inside plastic. So, you know, they can look through the plastic and see the liner, you drop it in the studio and they pick it up and, you know, at the appropriate time and they read one of them or at least make one up on their own. Um, and, you know, and they keep going with their show. So I would do eight of those. And then again, every single week, there's eight brand new ones put in there every single week. Then there's the pre-recorded IDs, okay? Those are the ones that are, they're telling you that the contest is coming up this hour or, you know, you can win a thousand dollars. They're quickies, but they're produced. They're not the long promos. They're sort of reminders of what's going on. I would do five of these imaging IDs about the contest or the promotion. I would do them five, you know, in the pre-week. And then once the contest got on, I would do maybe five for the first week of the contest. And then after that, I would do three, three or four, somewhere in there, and then three or four the next week. But I would keep adding them in, where the long promos, I would actually take them out. I take the first five out and just play the new second five and the new third five and take the second week out, okay? Just so you understand what's going on. But I would let the IDs um, accumulate. So you have five, then you have another three, now you got eight, and then another three, now you have 11 of them running, you know, and if the thing went on for a long while, you might have 20 of these imaging things running, and um, everything's fresh, because again, along the way, a lot of people would have never heard the earlier ones. Uh, it's easier to do, I think, personally, on the small IDs to just let them run, because they tend to not say a whole lot specific to remember, where the longer promos, if you're doing them right, they have some specific things in there. Somebody might go, oh, yeah, I've heard that a bunch of times. Tell me something new. You know, feed it to me in a different manner. 
Okay, so that's why I like to get rid of the long ones and only put new ones in. Now that we know what we're dealing with, you know, these type of uh, promos and IDs and liners and how they're turned over and all of that stuff as far as the making of them, okay, let's get into the specifics of playing them. I'm going to split the contests and promotions into major ones and non-major ones. So let's start with the major contest. And we're going to call this package A, okay? Basic package A. And that would be, to me, one recorded promo, again, around 30 to 45 seconds long, one liner, and roughly they are 30 minutes apart and I'm running them every single hour. That's to me what I would do. You could put them anywhere on the clock that you like, but you're gonna separate them by a half hour. The next one up from that would be major package B. It's a little bit more heavy in people's faces. And that would be one recorded promo, again, 30 to 45 seconds long, and two liners. And now these things are running every hour, but they're 20 minutes apart. Then there's package uh, number three, which would be package C, and that's the full-on one. You've got a recorded promo going, you've got a couple liners going, they're 20 minutes apart every single hour, plus you have one sweep ID or a legal ID or both of those going at once. So you might have the promo and you have two liners and then you have two IDs going, you got five things going in an hour and in a contest hour, You'd have the sixth thing, which was actually be the contest. Maybe even you could say it's actually seven because you're going to do the contest tease to get somebody on the air, and then you're actually going to play the contest. So it's like full on contest for you know that complete hour that the contest is in. But that's what you got to do. You got to really bang away at the, this stuff. Now, here's something that you definitely have to bear in mind uh, because sometimes you would slow this stuff down. So let's say it's a major contest. Again, we're playing this intuition and um, we're, or, or some other game or something that's gonna last a month, a month and a half or two months because you're gonna go th right through the ratings period with it. You probably should, and you know, it's gonna be up to you because I can't tell you, but I'm just telling you what I would probably do somewhere else just to give you a feel for it. If I was running something for a month and a half or two months, no matter how great I thought that contest was, even the intuition one, which, you know, flipping of the coin, which I think is awesome, and it's you know fun for people to play, so therefore they can take it longer, I would still start backing down the promotion of it somewhere along the way. And a lot of that would be feel of, mm, okay, I think it's time. So it's hard to tell you, but just roughly, I would come in and be banging full tilt with your know, package C, all right, every single hour, one week up to its, you know, to when the contest starts. So if the contest started on a Monday, I would be there on the Monday prior to it starting on a Monday, you know, next Monday, next Monday, next Monday, every single hour, and then the contest starts. And again, I would be going every single hour with package C, the full tilt, full on one. And then somewhere maybe around week three, I'd probably back it down to package B, okay? Probably about the three week mark. Might go to four weeks, but I'm guessing it would be somewhere around three, three and a half weeks, somewhere in there. And in addition, the jocks themselves, if they can relate anything that they're doing to the contest, um, by all means, they had you know, free reign to just throw it in as an extra. I don't know what that would necessarily be off the top of my head now. What do you do for non-major contests or promotions? Um, those are the ones like it might be something that occurs one time. You know, you, maybe you're doing a, a you, again, maybe you've got Garth tickets and you're going to do a you know Garth Brooks weekend or it's Garth Brooks all day Tuesday because that's the only amount of tickets that you have. Maybe you have 12 tickets, so you're going to go, you know, 6A to 6P every single hour. And, you know, and then your ticket allotment is gone and that's all you have. So for that, I would, depending on the artist, so if it was, if it was a really big artist, some, someone where you go like, woo, that's pretty heavy, like say Garth, if you're on a country station, or Keith Urban, or, uh, you know, it's Adele, if you got an AC radio station, again, you'd have to judge it on the, the act. I would either kick in three, four days out if it's an okay act, and if it's a major act, I'd start doing a week out, and I would maybe go every hour, um, with liners, I probably would not do a recorded promo. I might maybe do some recorded imaging. I don't think you need the whole recorded promo, but I would lean heavily on the liners. The jocks are doing liners, one or two an hour uh, for sure. Um, and uh, some imaging ID because all you need is just a flavor to me um, of the artist that you can win. And you know, everybody gets the feeling, ooh, I could get to go see Garth or I could get to go see Adele or Zach Brown Band. Or if it was a weekend type contest where maybe you had a lot of tickets or a lot of something 
and you're going to give them away Saturday and Sunday, I would probably start with uh, package A, actually, full promo, again, depending on what you're explaining, full promo, couple liners, and, and probably that's it. And I would start on Wednesday and I would be banging every hour, all day Wednesday, all day Thursday, all day Friday. And then for Saturday and Sunday, I would scale that down to probably one promo per hour while the contest is going on and you're giving it away on the weekend. One promo and uh, one liner per hour, again, a half hour apart. Then there's ongoing stuff. So you might have a retro uh, Saturday night. You know, so if Saturday night, 7 to midnight, you're doing all retro. You're going to have to promote that. That's one thing. We'll just hold it to the side for a second. You might have, uh, I don't know, uh, something that runs every single weekend. Maybe your station turns into solid gold on the weekend. Or maybe it does smooth jazz on the weekend. Or something that's a two-day thing on the weekend. So you need to promote that. Um, or you have every night at, you know, Monday through Friday, seven to midnight, you have a love song show, Quiet Storm or Delilah, something along those lines. So I would probably try to attack those in different ways for the retro, you know, retro Saturday night thing. I would probably start promoting that on a Wednesday and I would probably go with just liners, maybe some IDs and I would probably go every other hour and start on Wednesday and I would go up right up to when the show starts at seven o'clock on Saturday night. Um, again, these are hard ones because, and I'd say hard because if you have a major contest going, you know, that's really big, particularly if it's at the beginning of a major contest, you know, and you have some ongoing program like a retro Saturday night, you may choose to just ignore telling anybody about it for now because it's been running for a long while. It's one of those things that to me are, if you can promote it, you would want to promote it to tell people it's there because there's, I'm sure there's a lot of your audience that's, you know, new, that they don't know it's there, but it's expendable because in the scheme of things, it's still going to be there next week. So if something, you know, for something on the weekend, for a Saturday night or a Saturday Sunday, I would be thinking of, you're starting to tell people about it Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And if you can, particularly if they're in the clear and you have nothing else taking up more important space, promo space, I would be banging it reasonably heavy, not full on, but reasonably heavy. Every other hour, uh, maybe it's a, a liner one hour, the next hour it's a recorded promo, then maybe the next hour after that it's the, just the ID image with a liner, and then you're back to just, an, just a liner, and then there's the full promo, that kind of stuff. You, you have to kind of work it out what feels right to you, given whatever the show is and how long it's been on. If it's a Saturday night retro show and it's been on for, I don't know, eight years on your radio station, you probably don't have to tell too many people about it at all. I guess finally for this, um, you know, again, I could be here for days because there's so many different iterations of contests and promotions. So I'm just trying to give you a feel for what I think is the right way to go and what you'd be thinking, at least this is what I did, okay? So at least you, you're getting some sort of a ground floor of, of how many and what and how to change them and, you know, keep them fresh and all of that type of stuff. But another would be morning show promos because you want to promote the morning show. But then there's times where you actually don't. And there's been times where I didn't promote the morning show because maybe it's new and they're sort of getting their bearings. And I don't really want to tell too many people about it because I don't want them to judge the morning show as if it's the second coming of God, when in reality, it's just okay and they haven't hit stride yet. So I don't want to raise the audience's expectation that they're somehow awesome. And then they go and they get disappointed. Then they go, well, that's, you know, they, they told me it was great and it sucks as opposed to they just tune in. It's like, oh, okay, that's nice. But then you get the other situations where you go, this is a pretty good morning show, or I think they're hitting stride now. Now I'll start telling people about them. Or perhaps you have a morning show that's got a pretty good track record. Maybe they've been on the air three or four years as your morning show, and the numbers are pretty decent. They're not amazing, but you think that they can be better. But you definitely don't want to not tell people that, you know, that's your morning show. I would go at it with a recorded promo, some promo that's maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds long, that ideally the morning show did, or I'm mixing that with what the morning show did, specifically, they're, like, they're on the promo, you hear them, and then there's a promo person talking about the morning show, four or five different cuts of that, you know, interspersed with the morning show themselves and you're alternating. So, you know, it's say this is cut A, B, C, D. So it might be morning show A, 
morning show B, morning show C, morning show D, and that's what's going on. And you're going like every third hour or every second hour, depending on how good you think that morning show is and what they're talking about. You know, do they do okay promos or are there, hey, coming up tomorrow, we're going to be, and they're like, oh man, I don't want to miss that. That sounds like it's going to be funny or that sounds like it's going to be good. Or you have Kevin Costner on or, oh yeah, I'm going to be there. Whatever. What time is he on? You know, that kind of stuff. Or maybe they're doing the 710 pay your bills where, you know, somebody can win a thousand bucks and they're talking about it something again you have to judge how good is that message going to be uh, so are you want to go every every other hour or do you want to go every third hour i definitely would not go every hour for a morning show unless <laughs> don't come around unless i have some heritage morning show where it is carrying the radio station so if i had stern if i had seacrest if I had Jeff and Jerry in their prime, if I had Mar Maddie in the morning, uh, Bob and Tom, and you know, all those ones that are, they're just giant morning shows and they crush people in their path, I would for sure be doing something every single hour minimum about that show, okay? Round the clock. Now, so it doesn't get unbearable. It probably would be something like this, and I'm, I'm just winging off the top of my head because I'm figuring, I'm feeling right now like Maddie in the morning, or I'm figuring somebody like Stern. That's what's kind of running through my head right now. And I would probably make sure that there is a liner, probably a liner or jock talk every single hour on the radio station. So there's the minimum right there for the morning show. When I say jock talk, I mean, they're putting it in, in their own words. They're trying to relate it in some way. You know, maybe they make a joke or something's funny and they go, oh my God, we had a lot of funny you know, tomorrow morning with, uh, with Howard or Maddie and blah, 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 blah about the show. And then there's the regular liners where they just talk about the show. So liners every single hour. Then I would have recorded IDs. Again, some with the promo guy or promo woman. And she's, you know, doing the normal promo. And then there's other ones with the morning show doing it themselves. Uh, 15, 20 seconds long. I would have them running minimum every other hour. Okay. And I might even do some third thing you know, win at 710. I might make it the legal ID, 710, pay your bills, that type of thing on the morning show. And I might make that every single hour. Point being, if I got a heritage, amazing morning show, I am telling people about it because I, I am assuming and I want to believe, and therefore I will act accordingly, that that morning show is carrying my radio station for me. They're carrying a huge amount of the weight of my gig, and I'm going to make sure that they carry it well. Okay, I'm going to like pile those listeners on top of them and say, hey, please those people so that they come back. Okay, I don't want to ignore that the morning show is there. So I hope that helps. If there's any other questions about something specific, you know, like, hey, uh, I have this type of thing uh, on my radio station. Uh, what would you do about it? If you want to know, just, you know, send me an email or write something in the comments underneath here. And I, I will definitely answer you and I'll give you, you know, tell you what I would do. Again, even with this, this is what I would do. And this is what I have done. And this is the way I think. And I'm trying to just point that out to you that everything I just said would be 100% correct. Uh, and I had great success doing that stuff. But for your situation, it might be a little less. You might want to slow everything I told you down, or you might want to ramp it up. PPM, you know, if you're probably in a major market, it's my understanding right now. And again, I, I've not been dealing with P PPM on a, on a regular daily, weekly basis now. And, um, you know, but just in watching and talking to people and seeing the rotations, everything is a lot faster now where the rotations used to be 80 to 90 spins a week on your power power currents. Now they're into the 120s and 130s. It's a lot faster now. And, you know, classic hit stations, I know, used to play like, say, their power goal. You'd get it like, you know, max once a day. So it would play on a Monday, it would play on a Tuesday, it would play on a Wednesday, no faster than that, than that. Usually it would be every day and a half, maybe, maybe even every two days. You know, it's basically... You know, it's running on a, like a 36 hour rotation. Well, now you might get that song, um, this, you know, classic hit Power Gold. You might get it three times per day, every day. So it's running with a 3721. You're, you know, instead of playing five times in a seven day week, it'd be playing 21 times in a seven day week. So with that in mind, um, you know, that major package of, you know, you know, promotions that I went through with package C where you're running full tilt that in this day and age may not be enough given your situation. If you're in a major market with a lot of radio stations, 
and they're banging away, you might have to jack that up considerably. But then on the other hand, you know, maybe that's not a good thing to do because one of the things that's been happening as everybody's jacked up the rotations and uh, yeah, I don't know the answer to this, but I mean, it definitely makes you wonder. I mean, I always think in contrarian terms, if everybody's doing this, maybe I should go the other way. I mean, that's just how my mind has always worked. I don't like to do what everybody else does. But if everybody's picking the rotations up and really, really turning them faster and faster and faster and faster, and when you look at the research and you look at things that as they turn faster and faster and faster, the time spent listening is dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. Um, it might be because they're turning them faster and faster and faster. And that's why it's dropping. Although you never a hundred percent necessarily know because maybe it's right to do because it's dropping and dropping and therefore they're listing less and less and less. So you need to spin stuff faster to make sure they hear the hits chicken and egg thing. It's like, which one's actually, coming first, which one's causing the speeding up and the TSL drop? You know, what's going on there? Don't really know, but again, it's something that you should, you know, if, uh, if you're PD now, you should be trying to figure out, particularly if you're in a PPM market, because they have the software that'll tell you a lot of that stuff and you're going to have to be really super digging into it. If you're in a diary market, well, good luck on that because you're not, you're not going to get any amount of data that's going to really tell you that answer unless you have really specific research done for you. So that's it for promotions. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, again, if you need some specifics, you might want to just you know, roll back this lesson and go through and maybe write some stuff down off the screen, you know, package A, package B, package C, and that type of stuff and add it into your own thinking. As always, it's great for you to subscribe. I looked up uh, just before this lesson, before I recorded this, so I don't know where it is now when you're watching it, but there were 398 PDs subscribed. It'd be awesome if you would subscribe if you haven't and put that thing over 400 PDs. It just sounds good, 400 PDs. It's just neat from around the world. Hit the like button if you like these, and you know, if you're getting something out of them, and of course that other button, the bell, which will give you a notification every time there's a new lesson. Next week, we're gonna move into the world of rock, and there'll be a lot of specifics. There will be a lot of questions that I am asking to Dave Lang. Dave is a rock consultant, been that way for years and years, and I'll go through his pedigree and um, you know, and his, uh, you know, his history of what he's done. But suffice to say, Dave has been programming rock at hundreds of radio stations, hundreds, for decades. I don't know, probably three or four decades. So we're gonna go through trends, how things morph to get the way they are now, history, you know, specifics of what you would be playing, all of that stuff. As we move into the rock format, we've already done alternative. Now we're into rock as number two, and then coming up, we'll be doing AC and the other formats as I get a hold of other people who are expert in those, and we'll pick them apart. Okay, so that's where we're going with this, uh, this course, uh, how to be a radio PD, and I hope I can make you a really good one. Until the next time. See ya.